Hello, welcome and congratulations to achieving Teresa's third mansion. We have done mansions one and two in previous series. So there are links for those if you would like. And when we get to contemplation, you'll find there are links at the bottom of the description box. If you haven't practiced uh, contemplation much, um, there are plenty of videos to teach you. Let's go. Today, our session is about God's will, again, but following it. How do we get motivated to follow God's will when we think we know what it is? Our method is always Lexio Divina. The Holy Spirit is in the center. And whether we're reading in the Lectio or reflecting, meditating on the scripture, or whether we're praying conversationally or sitting in silence, the Holy Spirit is with us always, teaching us. Teresa says the entry door for the castle is prayer and meditation. So that's, of course, what we'll be doing. Why? To discover who you really are below the surface level of yourself out in the world. What's your true self? So the only thing that you may not have is a journal. So a spiral notebook is fine because you'll be writing things down every day. The mansions inside the castle are seven. We, having finished Mansions 1 and 2, are on the third one, Surrender of Will and Practicing the Virtues. Just like Lectio Divina, the action inside of the castle, the interior castle, is a mist of the Holy Spirit. All right, so see if you can feel a mist of the Holy Spirit uh, figuratively. Here we are at the third. As we get closer to God, it means we're becoming more and more like God. We'll never be like God. We'll never know God anywhere near the depths, but we'll be closer and closer. Today, our quest is God's will to follow. What gets us motivated to follow? What keeps us following? The reading today is two Bible verses that are, you may think, oh, I'm not sure these are related, but we'll work out, we'll work on them till I hope you do. This first one is from John 8. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Whoever follows me. And then Jeremiah 17. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots inside right by the stream it does not fear when heat comes its leaves are always green it has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit it has no worries blessed is the one who trusts in the lord whose confidence is in god no worries there are no worries so, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. How do I follow? Think about how do you follow God? And we're assuming that you have already figured out what's God's will, that you've had some kind of still small voice or an impression something laid on your mind but whatever it is you have an idea of what God expects of you so the question is how do you follow take 30 seconds and decide how is it that you will follow
Well, I said I follow the urgings or impressions from God, such as talking to a new person, standing up and saying something at a meeting, staying home in quiet rather than going out. These are examples of how I follow. Um, I didn't mention this one, talking in, uh, standing up and saying something at a meeting. You know how hard that is. It's hard to do it at church. It's hard to do it in a, a meeting where they want feedback from people. But what happens to me is my heart starts beating very rapidly. It pounds. Then I know I'm supposed to stand up and say what I'm thinking of. All right, have you ever had that experience? So whenever I'm in a meeting and that happens to me, it means that whatever it is in my mind that I was thinking about needs to be said. Sometimes that's pretty difficult. Staying home in quiet rather than going out. I know you've had that happen. I know you have had the urging to stay home in quiet, but you think it's your responsibility to go out. That's something I would like you to think about rethinking. Because I find that God often thinks staying home in quiet is a better option for me than going out. In fact, I've started staying home in quiet more than I had previously. Thank you very much. All right. The other thing is talking. Um, whenever I'm out and about, I am very different than other people. I think it comes from the fact I've moved so much that I am always, you know, in need of people to talk to. But I talk at the grocery store, I talk at the cleaners, I talk in the elevator a little bit, I talk, you know, at the airport. And I do that because I often feel led to talk to whoever looks a little down, or whoever has a small child, or whoever, you know, this or that. And it's because most of us need more noticing than we get in life. Think about that. And it takes so little for me to do that. In fact, I enjoy it. Afterwards, I feel good that I talk to the person. Very seldom do I not feel good that I reached out. The second lesson from Jeremiah, but blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and it never fails to bear fruit. So I want you to think about why doesn't the tree have any worries? What is this metaphor trying to say to us? Go.
Why don't I have worries? Well, just like the tree, we're connected to the source. We are connected to the source. I'm not jumping off a cliff, right? I mean, God doesn't ask us to do stuff like that. I'm just doing something a little different than I usually do. Like talking to a person I've never talked to before. I feel led to extend myself or to meet another person. So think about that. Can you have the motivation to extend yourself a little more than you normally do when God, you feel led to do something rather than ignore it, extend yourself? Or sometimes I feel led to do some sort of project. That seems to be something that... Um, I lately especially have been led to do. So, another Bible verse, Psalm 56. When I'm afraid, I put my trust in you, in God whose word I praise, in God I trust and am not afraid. So when we feel these urgings, put your trust in God. We, we are trying to build up our trust in God so that we can do anything he asks of us. Similarly, for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, it says in 1 Timothy, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. All right, so this was a verse that affected me greatly when I was maybe 18 or 19 and I was in Campus Crusade for Christ. Um, this whole idea of not having to be timid, but the Holy Spirit giving me power and love and self-discipline was very meaningful to me. I think until then I felt uh, more timid than I should have felt. And I found this a very moving verse. So the key idea here is really that you must step out in faith despite your fear and uncertainty. You must step out in faith, trusting God. And as you trust God more and more, this will become easier for you to do. And remember, it's not just us doing it. The Holy Spirit is giving us love, power, and self-discipline to be able to do it. Today's question is, search me, God, and know my heart. How do I motivate myself to follow something I perceive as God's will? How do I motivate myself? What do I have to do? What do I have to do? If I sense God is leading me somewhere, what do I have to do? So let your mind answer this as a questionnaire. Picture yourself in a situation and how what do you have to do to motivate yourself to do it go Well, what my mind came up with was, well, maybe it's something I haven't done before. I think that's possible. Being brave means I go past my fear, right? So I feel a little fearful, but I make that step forward, whatever it is, figuratively, and do it. So being brave always means that you're afraid, right? You can't be brave if you're not afraid. So what you do when you're brave is push out, even though you're fearful or uncertain. I have to practice on small things. Yeah, before you decide to move to Chile and feel that you're led, or um, you decide to take a correspondence course or an online, 
university course or seek a degree, practice in small things first to build your confidence that God is answering you and God is pushing you in that direction. You need practice knowing what God's will is for you, but also practice in acting on it. You know, with uncertainty, if you feel led to do something, but you're very uncertain, just try it. Remember how little kids do that? They get back on their bike when they just fell down. They try to do it without training wheels and they always fall down. But, and they're uncertain, they don't know whether they can do it or not, but they're optimistic, right? And they keep practicing. Even when they fall off, they keep practicing and they get better and better. So they hardly ever fall off anymore. So that's the thing with uncertainty. Uncertainty is there when you've never done something before. Or uncertainty is there when you're meeting a new person. Or uncertainty is there when you're trying a new opportunity that seems to have just come up. Now, pray to the Lord. Lord, how do I get myself moving to follow your will? Lord, how do I get myself moving to follow your will when I'm uncertain or fearful? Pray. Holy Spirit, please tell us. Go. The Spirit replied to me, courage in the face of fear is what this should be. Courage in the face of fear builds you up, right? The first time you go off the high board and you successfully have the courage to jump, it builds you up. Usually you run around and get on again. Trust can be built if you work on small trusts first. Trusting God on small things. That's similar to what we had from our mind. Trusting God. Faith is trusting God. Faith isn't just belief in words. Faith, faith is mostly trusting God in your life. Now, the Spirit said talk to somebody supportive about what you perceive as God's will. So, if you're led to do something and you're a little confused about it, um, asking another Christian, but it needs to be someone supportive, someone who knows what you're talking about here. Otherwise, they'll just poo-poo it, won't they? Even other Christians don't know what we're doing. Tell another Christian and then do it and then report back. Like you say, I used to do this with my sister and I'd say, okay, this is what I think I'm supposed to do. And then I would report back when I did it. So then that urges me on a little more. So, motivating ourselves to follow. Well, the notes both seem to Im Im imply courage is necessary. When we are fearful or uncertain. Second, we step out in trust. And on small things first. Until we get more practiced. A 
God will keep working with us. And then tell other like-minded people. It's hard to do this uh, with people who don't really believe God is supernatural and don't believe that the Holy Spirit will talk to you. So you have to choose your people carefully or others will just shut you down. And get their help. Either, you know, by talking over God's will so you're sure it is, or in saying, okay, I'm supposed to be doing this and I know I should, so I'm telling you now so I can report back. All right? Two ways of doing that. You know, pretty much the mind and the spirit of mine were similar, maybe because I've done this for a while. Uh, but I'm uncertain frequently. This doesn't mean I'm not uncertain. This doesn't mean that sometimes I'm not puzzled over what God, God's will is. Um, this doesn't mean that it's easy for me to reach out, even though I do it frequently, that it's easy for me to talk to people around me. It just becomes a habit. So I become less reticent and more open to other people. Okay? And that's what has happened in practice. But it's still not always easy for me at all to talk to someone that looks like they might need a word. I'm not talking really about helping other people. I'm talking about something much less than that. I'm talking about, I feel led often to acknowledge another person's presence. Acknowledge another person's presence. Um, I reflected very personally on this. So this is a reflection from my own life and experience. God is in the small things of life, as well as the big things. I'm led on a daily basis, sometimes just in the order in which I do things. Often, it is not getting involved in activities that are less important. Don't we usually have more things on our list than we can accomplish in one day? I'm over-ambitious. Often, there are activities that I don't get involved in because uh, I, I follow them in a different order. I do them as I'm led to do them. So that, And I ask God, help me do the important things today. What's important for me to do today? And this is especially true in my job as a teacher. Because there are a million things a teacher needs to do. And they, they're, they're more every year. So, as a teacher overwhelmed with tasks, management, and then caring about people, I pray over and over for God to show me what is most important. I can't even do half of the tasks I'm supposed to be doing every day as a teacher. It's really quite an overwhelming job. But, one of the reasons it's overwhelming is it's a very important job. The students sometimes say to me something like, well, why did you become a teacher? Like I could have, you know, done many other things. I said, well, what's more important than being a teacher? And they look at me like I have a hole in my head. Well, really, what's more important than being a teacher? And training kids for our society, our globe, our planet, our world, etc. Well, what's more important than that? So I never ever think that what I'm doing at school overall is important is is isn't important. It is. But what I pray about is for all the tasks. What's the most important for me to do today? Most tasks wait till tomorrow and finally some tasks it just doesn't matter. Often we see God's will after we pray for something. All right, so I pray over and over to show me what's important, and then I start noticing it. So the same thing can happen to you. Um, when you pray and God leads you somewhere, you start looking for clues, right? You look for clues for God's will. Or when you pray asking for your yourself, but with a good motive, you look for that. So the second thing, other than after we 
look for what we pray for. Remember, God knows you better than you know yourself. But when you pray for God's help, it alerts you to responses from God throughout our day. The biggest problem we have is our attention is so weak. So praying focuses our mind on a quietness. All right, alerts us to responses to God from God throughout the day. You will build your motivation and your skill in doing God's will over time. A year from now, for example, you'll find yourself following this much easier. It will seem like a much easier activity on a daily basis. Let's go into contemplation, sitting in silence with God for as long as you can. Up to 20 minutes is good. Use the sacred word whenever you find yourself thinking, and it just says, God, I'm coming back to you. All right. As soon as you hear the bells, remember you'll need to turn off the video. So you have just the right amount of time to contemplate. Welcome back from contemplation. Let's end our session together with prayer. Lord, help us to see you as you really are, that is, wanting us to have a fruitful, purposeful life of meaning, with security, and wonderful relationships and adventure. Forgive us when we don't follow your will, even though we perceive it. Forgive our uncertainty and fear. Give us courage. Give us trust in you, strength, and the motivation to act. Guide us in our practice of following your will. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. So, thank you for coming today. And do practice following God's will, little by little. Go with God. Bye.